All right guys, so today I dusted off my old cowboy hat and I thought I'd give you more of a vlog style update from here at the ranch. <laughs> and one of the reasons is, take a look at this, these cattle have eaten this whole trailer full of hay. I'm down to just the last part of a bale. And I, I usually get uh, three by four by eight, uh, three feet by four feet by eight feet <laughs> bales. And they weigh about 1,500 pounds. And take a look at this. I have someone else who is very interested in my hay. <laughs> These deer found my hay and they've been coming for a little nibble, but they're so small they really can't do much damage. So I just kind of let them nibble around the edges. Compared to my cows, they they don't eat hardly anything, and there's only a few that kind of just nibble off of what's on the ground. So I thought first I'd give you an update on my cows. Let's check those guys out. Okay, so before I show you my cows, I wanted to show you this. So we're up here in the mountains of Colorado, about two miles above uh, sea level. <laughs> so it's really far up. It's really cold most of the year, and most of the time, we don't have water, we have ice. <laughs> and take a look at this, this is the tank that the, the cows drink out of. And I use this big, huge bar, it's like, it's a huge, I don't know what they call it, <laughs> it's like a big nail, but it weighs about, it must weigh 30, 35 pounds. And I use it to, to break the, the ice in this tank. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. And, and every day I come out here and break the ice, and that is mountain living with cattle. You just gotta really keep breaking it. <laughs> and what I have in here, I actually don't have a heater because a heater takes an incredible amount of heat, of electricity to run the heater. So what I actually have is I just have a really big, it's like a pond pump down there and it keeps the water circulating, keeps it from freezing. I just break a hole in it and it's about time to fill it up. So let me, let me show you the cows. I just thought this ice was kind of crazy. So earlier in the year, I had a herd of 12 cattle. And let me tell you, it was too much. It was too many to fit around this feeder. It was too many to fit in my loafing shed. And I pared it down to just four head of cattle. And I have two massive Angus bulls. These guys probably weigh more than 2,000 pounds a piece. These guys are massive. And believe it or not, they're only about three years old. And I think they're pretty much full size. I don't think they'll get much bigger than they are. This is T-Bone, he's my more friendly one. And then I have one female, she's a, she's a heifer, so she hasn't had a, had a baby yet. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about naming her Penelope. <laughs> That's kind of a neat little name, huh? Yeah, she's very friendly. She's 1,004. She likes to chew on my back brace. <laughs> and then I have two more cows over here. Another big black Angus bull. And I was actually thinking of leasing out the bulls. Maybe one of them this year to, to, uh, to work on some other people's herds to kind of breed with the females. And then we got this guy. He's a little bit skittish. He's, this one's actually a steer. So a steer is basically a castrated bull <laughs> and and everyone wants the steers for meat and I just I just keep him as a pet and he's a little skittish now <laughs> I've never seen him that jumpy I think it's just because of the camera and that I'm talking <laughs> but uh, yeah these bulls these bulls are really impressive and when the girl comes into heat when this little female comes into heat then the bulls start fighting and last year I had so many females that the bulls are almost always fighting so this year they really won't fight that much so here's kind of their little loafing shed that I actually built this with a sawmill back when I was unemployed for eight months and it was really fun building it I cut all the trees and, and, and cut all the planks on my sawmill and, and built it I just didn't really even have plans. I just kind of scratched it out on a piece of paper and threw it together. It was it was really fun to build. And this is their little little arena they have. It's quite a bit of room for just four cows. They have plenty of room to to run and <laughs> it's and for me it's really enjoyable just to have a few cows, but one you know when I got up to 12 cows, it was just a little too overwhelming. And uh, now that I'm back down to four, I find it really enjoyable and it's 
not as much work and they don't eat as much hay and <laughs> there's plenty of room around the feeder and I, I'll still get one uh, little baby cow next year probably midsummer so that'll be fun and so so from here let me uh, let me go through and uh, I'll show you uh, I'll show you my dogs so if you've been following my dogs uh, I bred my two dogs together and I kept one puppy and let me show you how big that puppy is. Alright, so I am down here with the dogs and I want you to check this out. <laughs> Look at where I've been dumping their water. It's just a big ice pile that's building up more and more. <laughs> it's definitely ice up here in the winter. And <laughs> here is little baby cobra. Little baby cobra. Ooh! And <laughs> little baby cobra. You can't even tell which one's cobra. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I think Cobra is bigger than Mama, huh? Little baby Cobra, wow, you got so big, oh my goodness, huh? <laughs> so if you're wondering, if you haven't seen the some of my previous videos, this is Mama here, she is, her name's Omani, she's a purebred Rhodesian Ridgeback, and this is baby Cobra here, and he is a mix between the Rhodesian Ridgeback and a St. Bernard. And my St. Bernard is purebred. His name's Chicote, like the Chicote from Star Trek. <laughs> That's where he got the name. And he's he always carries his bowl. And now Chicote, our little baby cover, has been picking up his bowl too and carrying it around, which is pretty cute. Cool. But he is super, super obedient. And and that's one of the things I like about the mix. Come here, cover. Come here, come here, come here, sit, come here, come here, oh, no, they're too excited now, <laughs> usually he sits right there, come here, Cobra, Cobra, come here, ah, oh, he's too excited, all right, Cobra, Cobra, <laughs> he's like, what's going on, I usually get, I usually have him sit when I'm feeding him and he's really obedient, but he's just a little too excited now, but that is little baby Cobra all grown up, <laughs> All right, so I am in my reptile room right now, and I am in the middle of the ball python breeding season, if you've been following me through my videos. And take a look at this. I have my schedule, and I went through the whole sequence of rotating my males for the week, and this is the time where I separate all my males. So, for example, um, <laughs> I'll just bring you guys along for the ride. I have my albino pied with my clown, shooting for triple heads on that one, and it doesn't really matter... Uh, where you put them, you can put them back in the original tubs that they came from, but it's it's not really that essential. And what I did is I kind of I sprayed down the substrate, and made sure the water was good in here, and I'm just moving them over. And and then what I do is I move the labels. So this is the albino pied moving over here. And then what I'm going to do after I separate everybody is I'm going to go through and give everyone a, give the substrates a good soak so some of these <laughs> so this is my desert ghost combos together and if they're locked if their tails are locked together then I don't separate them I leave them until uh, this this guy right here <laughs> let's see which one's which this is my male the female looks like she's going into shed they're definitely not locked And this is my male pastel desert ghost. Beautiful male. And I'll just kind of walk you through some of these other ones up here. So I need my little step stool to get up to the top here. And up here is my coral glow uh, crossed with um, just a normal. Let me adjust my stool here. <laughs> See if I can get up and get this boy out of here. They're definitely not locked. And you can tell that the substrate is really dry. It just really dries out in this Colorado climate. Oh, I'll put this boy back down here. And really what I'm hoping, I, for that coral glow, uh, I popped out some kind of a weird kind of a, a dinker project. And I kind of want to Hatch out another one. <laughs> See if I can get this guy in here. And then go for the super. That's kind of what I'm hoping for that. And then I have the scaleless head with my lesser. Hoping for a 
this, putting the scaleless into the lesser project and the super lesser and the lesser bamboo and all that hoping to work the scaleless head into it and let's see if I can get in here without getting bit <laughs> let's see we need an open tub here just throw them in here then can't forget to move the, the name tags these name tags are just little magnetic strips and I put uh, the, the IDs on with the label maker <coughs> Makes it really nice just to move the labels. Let's see what else we have here. I have my bamboo and with my pastel. Hoping for some more pastel bamboos. Ooh, these guys, check that out. These guys are locked. See their tails together? If you can see that. The tail wrap. So, and the bamboo always seems to be locked for days so I'm gonna slowly just leave those guys alone <laughs> and let's see what else we have here we have a fire pine with my normal trying to prove out the fire pine that has never really bred with anything I paired them up last year and this fire pine everything I paired it with ooh <laughs> you see that I could have took a bite from this girl she is in feeding mode and I put my hand in there that was not good. I'll see if I can get this guy out of here. <laughs> These guys are intertwined. All right. Let's see. We have another empty tub down here. Definitely don't want to take a bite from that girl. Oof. All right. Let's see what else we have here have a few more kind of scattered through here let's see I have my big spider pine with my head caramel and this I should get some spiders Ooh, let's see they're not together the spider pie is awesome I should get some spider head pies and some head pies and just some straight spiders. I love the spider gene. I haven't really produced many spiders. Then I'll move his name tag. And let's see what else. That might be everything. I have one more tub. And that's for the bamboo. So that's pretty much it for moving my males. So here's another update that's really cool. So you guys know I got a spider recently, a Brazilian white knee tarantula. And this is actually not the tarantula. My tarantula spun a web and then it flipped upside down. It looked like it was dead and then it shed. And now uh, you really have to be careful after the shed, when they shed, because uh, they can really be damaged by anything. You don't really want to touch them for at least a week until their exoskeleton really hardens up. And you want to remove all the feeder insects, especially the crickets. They can do some damage to a freshly shed spider. But he's doing great. <laughs> I was wondering why he wasn't eating. And it was because he was getting ready to shed. Alright, so I have my truck all loaded up. I'm ready to go get another four bales of hay for these cows. And on my Dodge Ram 3500 at the helm. Got some new tires, so that's pretty cool. I <laughs> got them on, actually got my tires on Black Friday. And it was buy three, get one free. It was a pretty awesome deal. And these are actually Cooper tires. And I have to say, I think this is by far the best tire I've ever had on these trucks. I've had BF Goodrich's and some Big O, Bigfoot's and, and these Coopers. I think they are, uh, you know, sometimes you can get tires that are kind of an odd, uh, so sometimes you get them a little out of round and, and you really can't tell for the brand, but I think as far as this particular set of tires, it's, it's really balanced and smooth. So I thought I'd bring you along on this journey to get some hay. It's always kind of an adventure. We live up here in the mountains and we go basically from the mountains 
down the foothills into the city, through the city to the plains, and all the way out into the desert. So just in, in a matter of an hour and a half drive, you can go through so many different uh, scenery changes as you drive through Colorado. They say if you don't like the scenery in Colorado, just get in your vehicle and drive a half hour and everything changes. <laughs> it's pretty true. So I want to bring you out and we're going to go get some hay. Let's go. Big old cow. <laughs> well, I'm almost here. So I'm all strapped down and ready to go. Isn't this the most beautiful hay you've ever seen? So Ron actually told me a quick story about this. He said, we're here in Colorado, but this is coming out of Utah. And apparently everybody's asking for the blue stringers. It's got the blue strings on it right here. <laughs> and that's what they go by. Apparently the guy that bales this uses some kind of a steam processing to compact it and keep it really fresh. I thought that was interesting. I had never heard of anything like that. All right guys, so I have this load of hay home, safe and sound. Thanks for coming with me. There's nothing I enjoy more than bringing you guys along on another animal adventure throughout my day. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.